Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Tug Avenger here and today we learned the three aircraft that will be coming to Ace Combat 7 with its season pass. They come as no surprise. We expected them to be the ADF family and that is exactly what we got. The Morgan, the Falcon and the final boss of Ace Combat 7, the ADF-11 Raven. But while the aircraft themselves did not come as a surprise, they certainly pack some in their weapons. Let's start with the star of Ace Combat 7, the ADF-11 Raven. Now, while it is a drone in the campaign, it is perfectly capable of carrying a cockpit, and that is the version we have here. And right away, what jumps to my eye isn't even its shape, its performance, its special weapons, it's what it calls a gun. The ADF-11F Raven carries pulse lasers in place of a cannon. And that is quite frightening. We learned of that in yesterday's teaser, but there was still the question of whether or not it would be as powerful as the special weapon version. However, from this clip, we can clearly see it is. Perhaps it won't have the same range, but the raw power is there. And being able to carry arguably the most powerful special weapon in Ace Combat 7, alongside your regular missiles and special weapon will be something to behold, both in multiplayer, but I would argue especially in single player. My records won't stand a chance against this monster. And to complement it, it carries a TLS, which appears to be no different than the one we already have in game, although it is interesting to notice the miniaturization of the laser module. Then there's the other big selling point of the Raven, the weapon UAVs. We already knew these were coming, as there's a news data in the game for them, including parts to reduce its reload time and increase its damage and carry capacity. Unlike their campaign counterparts, they seem to fire pulse lasers instead of a continuous one. And judging from the number of hits they get on the bomber, they seem to deal similar damage to the player pulse lasers, although with imperfect accuracy. But we won't know how good they are until we know how well they track. And this trailer doesn't show us that. And the Raven's final special weapon goes unmentioned because it's not new, but, very appropriately, it's a QAM trying to go unnoticed. As if we needed more evidence this thing is going to be an absolute monster. And speaking of monster, Jesus, look at the size of this thing! Takes the entire screen! What an absolute unit! Aside from the default squadron skins, it should come with three plain color skins. A default grey, a Zoe red, and the Hugin and Moon in black. As the other two will have a 7th DLC skin, it's also very likely the Raven will have one, but at this point we just don't know what it'll be. Anyway, moving on to a fan favorite, the Falcon. And there's frankly not that much to say about it. It is the Falcon as we knew it, coffin cockpit, a blue TLS, and 4 AMs. And its third special weapon is also traditional for the Falcon, but this one some of us didn't think we'd see it again, the FAB. We'll have to wait to see how powerful it is, but if that is a one-shot on a destroyer, it's at least twice as powerful as the UGB. All Falcon footage in this trailer shows an OADF skin with number 16, Blaze's number. We can expect this to be the number 7 special skin for the Falcon. We also know there will be a plain black one, as there has in previous games from promotional screenshots, and the best guess for the remaining one will be a blue or green digital camo as has also been in previous games. Finally, the Morgan. And the first thing I'll note is, this isn't Pixie's skin. That's Cypher's number 32. A bit surprising, but we'll have to wait and see if there's a version with Pixie's number 12. Like its brethren, the Morgan comes with its TLS, in this case the chunkier Zoazite pause. Like the Falcon, it brings back a weapon we thought had been abandoned, but in a unique manner. The Morganite pod returns as an ESM, an electronic support measure. From context, it appears to improve the homing capabilities of both you and your teammates within the ESM's area. By itself, that's already a massive improvement on the very poor ESM from Ace Combat Infinity. However, I would not discount the possibility that it works as a traditional ECM as well, deflecting missiles from you. And finally, sound the nuclear klaxons, here comes the original Ace Combat portable nuke, the multi-purpose burst missile. This is going to be so fun to play with, and they know it. Why do you think they tested it on the platforms for Mission 11? It can still track planes as it always has, but 
I doubt it'll be of much use in multiplayer, but boy oh boy it'll be good for a single. The Morgan also gets the alternative plain black scheme, we'll have to wait for the rest. We didn't even see the default yet. We can expect all three of them to be top tiers. I had some expectation they might lower the Morgan a couple of tiers, because it is a 25 year old design by now, and to provide some differentiation from its modern counterparts, but it carries at least some 30 TLS shots, so we can expect it to be at the top as well. Aircraft aside, we're also getting some extra skins, all Sol and Mihai skins with full erosion markings, and the one, the only, F-22 Mobius. All DLC skins come as their own special slot, so even PC players who already in are enjoying the use of these skins will be able to do so without sacrificing another slot. Some historical emblems will also be on offer, alongside the Ice F and Free Erosion ones which until now were locked to PS4 VR. We'll be getting a new aircraft per month, starting with the Raven, on the 22nd of May. Each aircraft will release alongside one of the skins and some of the emblems. And I believe that's it for the aircraft. I will confess, I would have preferred some real aircraft being added, and no, that's not just my preference for the Swedish ones speaking. Or alternatively, I would have liked to have seen my personal favorite Ace Combat original, the XF-A27. But the Morgan and the Falcon are absolute fan favorites of the community. I would never say a word against them, and I'm glad that is exactly what Project Aces is giving us. Ace Combat 7, as a whole, has been a love letter to us, the longtime fans, and this TLC is just the same. Now, that was the aircraft half of the season pass. The other half are the three DLC missions that were yet to hear anything about other than that mysterious teaser back in January. I look forward to those even more than the aircraft, and I'll be here to cover them when they talk about them. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, fair winds.